Hi and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around we'll be looking at another product sent to me for evaluation by Banggood. Uh, it's this handheld thermograph camera uh, for $199 uh, shipped from the USA. And uh, it is a pretty decent camera. It's not very high resolution. There's a total of a thousand pixels of temperature sensing. Uh, it's 32 by 32 if I remember right, which leaves 1,024 pixels. Uh, it also has a normal camera that the uh, thermal image can be overlaid with and I will show you that in a moment and uh, also a regular temperature sensor uh, it has an LED to illuminate objects to help you out if you need on the front and uh, let's just open up and get into it uh, the resolution is plus or minus two percent or plus or minus four degrees Fahrenheit um, but this kind of camera can be extremely useful for identifying issues uh, that you can't see with the eye like some mechanical part getting hotter than others or especially when you're working on electronic circuitry if you're looking for hot components sometimes that indicates a good failed uh, component so it comes with a really nice case and uh, it's an interesting design because uh, the case is zipper material but no zipper it was just for effect it's kind of interesting looking actually uh, given that's an interesting choice uh, Comes with a carry strap and a manual, and it does not come with batteries, so I have preloaded this guy with some batteries. Um, turn it on, you push and hold menu. And that's also how you turn it off. And uh, you have to set the average uh, ambient temperature, or it confuses the device, because that sort of sets the center range. So you go into the menu, all right, so let's take a look at some of the menu items here. And I had to turn the backlight all the way up for this video because it was uh, kind of hard to read. So uh, first is your Fahrenheit Celsius choice. Uh, then there's the backlight setting, which defaults to 10%, and I assume that's for battery life because this thing eats batteries. They claim six hours, but my rechargeable nickel metal hydrides are getting like maybe an hour. Um, number of photos and you can preview the photos uh, the time of day ambient temperature uh, this is allows you to control a cursor to choose temperature you know to sh display a temperature on screen this is the emissivity uh, which is similar for other infrared temperature sensors even the ones that aren't video based and uh, they uh, you they give you a table in the manual that lets you choose uh, specific emissivities uh, constants based on what you're shooting at. So if you're looking for maximal ac accuracy rather than just identifying a hot spot, uh, you need to set that correctly. Uh, then there's how much memory in the memory card and. Um, uh, right here is the uh, uh, color spectrum for coldest to hottest. So there is a full rainbow effect, and uh, that's what it defaults to. And if you want to change it, uh, they have well, up, down arrow. Uh, there's a reduced range, a reduced color range, and uh, black and white. Uh, two versions of black and white. One is white is the coldest, black is the hottest. The other one's vice versa. Black is the coldest, white is the hottest. Um, and then a high contrast version uh, that makes things really stand out. So if I were to select this one, for example, there's my fingers. And you can see how, uh, how well they stand out. Um, also in the menu is your background temperature, and that's really important. Uh, it's actually set kind of high right now because I was outside where it was almost 100. Um, that sets the middle of the range for your temperature range, so that's kind of important. Um, just another look at some of these uh, color ranges they've got here. Um, here is one of the black and white ones. And uh, that is... Uh, white is uh, black is the hottest so here we'll go maximal so there's my fingers and they're showing up as black and their hottest item in the screen uh, we can reverse that with this one 
now my fingers are showing up as white and that can be overlaid with the video now one of the interesting things about the video overlay control let me go back to the high contrast because that seems like a really good choice when you're trying to pick things out um, when you're in the high contrast mode this right now we're looking at just the uh, the infrared sensor uh, all thousand pixels of it. You'll also notice that as I move my hand quickly it lags to keep up. That's because the uh, frame update rate is uh, kind of slow. But still, if you're not looking for high, you know, short-term events, it'll be perfect. Um, you also can allow some of the video from the camera to, to bleed through and uh, you can choose several levels of that so now you see the thermal image overlaid on the actual video now you notice it's right, not right on top of my fingers and the reason for that is because the uh, the thermal sensor and the video sensor aren't right in line with each other and don't have identical angles of view so there's always going to be an offset which caused by parallax error so you've got that setting and then we can go down to a uh, slightly less and even less still so that you're just barely seeing some of the uh, thermal signature and even less still where it's really subtle and it looks like you're even catching the scan rate on this one. Oh wow even one less and I think that's just pure video now and then back to uh, the maximum. You can also take pictures uh, that's what the knob on the front does. So you take and fire and take a picture and then you hit the menu button which is not obvious to save that picture. So get my fingers in there, take a picture, hit the menu button to save it, and then we can hop back here and if you want you can preview those pictures. And there you go. If you don't take them out of the MicroSecure digital card you can just take that out and load it. They're BMP files so not a problem. All in all, I think this camera is a really good camera. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other uh, things around the house here uh, that I'll shoot just to give you a perspective of what this camera looks like. All right, so here's looking at some pictures. First is the backlight on the computer monitor. This is turned sideways, and you can see the backlight's on one side of the computer monitor only. And this is the gas stove in the kitchen, and the flame's up and you can see a plume, a heat plume around it. And then I put the uh, kettle on top of that, and that this is all just within a minute or two, and you can see how quickly it heats up. Next up, we have the motor on my variable frequency drive, and I'll have another shot of this later in complete dark. This is with the lights on. Uh, so you can see the motor in the background. You can see it's much hotter than the surroundings. There's the variable frequency drive that's been on a while, and you can even see the wiring is slightly warmer in the surrounding as well, which makes sense because it's been on a while. Uh, this is looking up at the rafters with the lights on. Uh, the sun is beating on the side of the house and there's no insulation, so you can see the heat shining through, but the wood beams in between it. Also, another angle of the same thing, and you can see the lack of insulation really does stand out. Uh, next up is uh, outside and looking at the ground uh, in the sunlight, and it's 126 degrees uh, in the center of the screen there on the white pavement. And here's a shot of the cars, and you can see the red blobs over the cars. That's the reflective windshield reflectors reflecting infrared out of the car. Uh, you can also see that the black car is hotter than the white, that it's somewhat redder than the white is, uh, which is green. And on this last shot, you'll be able to see that the plant matter uh, is much cooler than the surroundings, which is typical because water is evaporating off the leaves, and so it keeps them cooler. Uh, next up is just the light reflecting from my inf my LED lamp that shoots, shines over the lathe, and that's light reflecting off the lathe, Chuck. And then we're going to do some work on the lathe, and here is light again reflecting off the workpiece before we start. And then I recal, and uh, here's the workpiece just starting to be turned, or just before it gets turned, and it's just slightly warmer than the ambient. Uh, that's after facing. And then... Uh, we're turning right now. The operation is going forth, and there's chips on the ground, and you can, or in the bin, and you can see them. 
And uh, after the process is done, the two, both the tool and the work are much hotter than they started, and you can see that as well. Chips have cooled off because they've got a lot of surface area. The next three shots, this is the motor again, shot in pitch dark. And there's no lights on the room. I can barely see where I'm shooting. I'm just going by sound of the motor, the variable frequency drive. That's another shot as well. Uh, it stands out quite noticeably, and, infrared, and every object in the universe uh, transmits infrared if it's not absolute zero. And this is looking at the rafters again without the insulation. All right, so my overall impressions of this camera is that it's uh, a pretty decent uh, value for the money. If you're looking for a thermal imaging camera for troubleshooting, you can use this around windows of the house to see if the air conditioning's leaking out. I live in Southern California, that's a useful feature. Uh, it's great for electronic uh, uh, troubleshooting, as I mentioned before, which is what I do for a living. And uh, you can find the hot components on the board pretty easily. And hot components are not always the bad ones, but they often can signify a bad one. Or sometimes a component that should be hot isn't. And so anyways, temperature is just another way to troubleshoot. Uh, you can use it in automobile situations on engines. You can use it in the machine shop to find out if parts are rubbing and generating excessive heat. And uh, in general, I think it's a pretty handy uh, tool to have around. And for 200 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. A uh, fluke uh, who bought Fleur is way more than double that. So uh, anyways, check it out if you're interested. And I'll put a link below. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.